only assignments. Uh, my cutoff for that is by tomorrow. So if you see that you were missing an assignment, please contact me. Let me know you to submit it because i got to submit midterm grades on Friday. So I have no option about that. I have to submit midterms. Uh, guys, I want to get some reactions. What were your reactions to the exam? Was it straightforward? Was it, was it things you weren't expecting? What are your thoughts? Pretty straightforward. Uh, was the study guide helpful? Yeah. Okay, so the study guide was helpful. Is there anything that you guys found uh, tripped you up at all? Was there anything that was, uh, was complicated? Okay. How many of you, I'm not going to ask you to show your hands in here, but yeah, that would be bad. I'm not going to ask for a poll on this one. I know that me occasionally when I was in college, I would go back through my exam after I, I studied for the exam and I would second guess some of my answers and I would end up making the right answer wrong by second guessing myself. I'm going to strongly encourage you guys to always follow your, your initial instincts with my exams. My exams are not designed to trip anybody up. And if you didn't do as well as you want to on the first exam, guess what? It won't count for the midterm, but I am still giving you an offer. If you want to do an in-class presentation, you can put up to three bonus points on that exam. It would come up after midterm because i got to post midterms and we only have one more class between now and midterms. If you want to do a facilitated discussion, literally take the first 10 minutes of class and get people to talk about something, uh, I'll add three points to your, your first test if you are looking to up your first test grade. I'll also be adding the bonus points for anybody who attended the Martin Luther King Day uh, probably later today or early tomorrow. So you've got another two points coming if you attended a session for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Any questions about that, guys? A couple of people uh, didn't even attempt the bonus questions. Always attempt the bonus questions. And I got a couple of jokes that I really wanted to give points for, but I knew if I got audited, somebody came in this class, they would say, you shouldn't have given points for this. They were just a little off color, but they were fun. Uh, but I couldn't give points for them. All right, guys, but today we're going to be talking about the stock game. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be picking teams, and I'm going to be covering the stock game with you guys. Your next assignment in this class isn't due till the 12th, and it's a simple assignment. It's called the rate of return. What I'm going to be teaching you to do in class is how basically to figure out how well your portfolio is doing. What I am going to be asking you to do, though, today, we're going to be forming groups. Now, we have a couple of folks who are absent, meaning we have some folks who will need to be added to a group when they get back. What I would like to do for the first part of class today would be to ask you to form groups of three to four people. Now, guys, what's the, what's the best part about group work? What's that? Yeah, to split the work. What's the worst part about group work? Somebody's always going to have a slacker in the group, or they may be the only person in the group who does all the work. So I'm encouraging you to think about who you're adding to your group. Are these people who are going to back you up? Are there people who are going to help you? Not everybody needs to be a good writer, but you should have a good writer in your group. Not everybody needs to be good at math, but you want somebody who's good at math. Not everybody needs to enjoy reading articles about companies, but somebody probably should. So our first part of class today, and I'm going to give you five minutes to do this, is to pick three to four people groups. So pick two to three of your closest friends or people you want to work with, and I'm going to actually ask you to position yourself with them because we're going to cover the game together. So you have five minutes to form your groups here. Go, go for it, guys. And we have a couple of folks who are out. <laughs> We have a couple of folks who are out, so you may have some folks who are joining groups later. Hey, by the way, is, is somebody in here friends with DeAsia that would be willing to add DeAsia to the group? Would somebody be willing? She's a, good, she's a very good writer. Okay, so DeAsia is part of your group. Okay. Well, that didn't take long. Well, the, the next part of our exercise today, I'm going to ask you to come up with a name for your group. And so, again, we, we have, yes, sir. Oh, how many, so how many of you are in a group? So you, I'm sorry? All right, so you guys are, are, you have a group now? Yeah. Excellent. Guys, what I want you to do is come up with a name for your group. 
It can be creative as hell. It can be the wolves of Wall Street. It can be whatever you want it to be. But what I'm asking you to do is come up with a name for your group. And your next part of the exercise today is to email me the name of your group and to carbon all of your team members. CC them on the email so I have a way to easily contact all of you. So you have five minutes to come up with a team name and we'll get that done right off the bat. And so for those of you who have, have team members who are coming in, like DeAsia's joining this group, Jake's joining this group, make sure you, you include them on your email as well. You're free to use your laptops or your phones for this, but I'm asking you to do that right now. Get creative, guys. It can literally be anything, guys. So what do we come up with for our name over here, guys? Stratton Somebody always picks it. I'm great with that. I'm great. I know there's got to be a creative name coming out of this. I love that. 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 I love Somebody has to email me your team name and put all your team members on the email and list them in the email so I know who's who. Thank you. 
Again, guys, if you have not yet, please email me your team name and team members. I'll be right back. I need to grab one more copy or something. team members, list the team members in there. Let's, we're going to cover the game now so you understand what's going on. What I have given you guys is all the resources you need to get an A on this project. This project for your final grade is 10% of your final grade. 
Now here's a question that I always get asked. Do I have to make money in the stock market to get an A on the assignment? And the answer is no. You can absolutely lose everything. You can lose all of your money and suffer terrible losses and still get an A on the project if you can explain to me how it happened. So the project itself, this is right out of your syllabus. And we're going to go through this, this paper with you guys very quickly because I want to spend some time going on an actual example. And you'll notice, guys, I gave each team one copy of a previous paper. This is a paper that earned an A in this class. Whoever has it, keep, keep a hold of it. You might even want to make a copy of it because you get one copy. If you lose it, I don't give you enough. This is, this is my favorite for you guys. Yes? Sorry, uh, you said it was 10 or 20%? It, it's 10. It, it's, I actually reduced the amount that it was that it accounted for. So it should be 10% of your grade. Um, I'll, I'll confirm that, but I'm almost sure I changed that in the actual percentages too. Right now, for this point, uh, uh, yeah, because that, that is correct. Is that your final is 45, 45 assignments and tests. So yes, yeah, 10% of your final grade. Lower stakes than, than originally in this class, and I did that on purpose. Sorry for the typo. Okay, well guys, if we look through this, what I'm asking you to do is take a, to take $100,000 of virtual money and invest it. We're going to be covering the stock market at a very superficial level in this chapter, and you're going to have an opportunity to play the markets. How many of you are already playing the markets on your own? Okay. Well, somebody share with me. What are you using to play the markets? Robinhood. Do we have Robinhood? Excellent. Anybody else using anything else? Yes. Weeble. Okay. We will want anybody else. How are you guys monitoring your stocks? Mainly through those apps. Okay. I'm going to, what I'm going to be showing you on Friday also is another way for you to be able to monitor your stocks. I happen to use Yahoo Finance, and I know Yahoo is very 2000, but their interface works very well for me. Google has, has opportunities for that. Even your iPhone will do a good job. I'm going to encourage you to sign up for some kind of a service to monitor stocks online because a lot of the things that you're required to do for this paper, if you do some sort of online monitoring, you, you can have the work done for you. Uh, I'll show you more of that on Friday, but like the graphics and things I'm asking you to produce, you can copy and paste right from a website if you were using a web interface. It takes a little more work with a phone. So what the goals are to really get you for the entire month of March to play the markets. So for the purposes of our exercise, you're monitoring the markets from March 1st, which was Monday, to the end of the month, the 31st, so the last business day of the month. Uh, I know that we're already several days into March. That's okay, because we can go back and we can see what the previous open and, and closings were. So what I'm asking you to do is to research the stocks you're interested in. When I say research them, I mean if you're going to Google uh, News, if you're going to the Wall Street Journal, if you're going to Forbes, research the companies you're interested in. Does somebody, for example, have a company in real life that they would invest in if they could? What's a company you guys would invest in in real life if you could? Yeah, Mike. Chick fil A? Yeah, it's a, it's a great one. Why would you pick Chick fil A? It's only busy. It serves some restaurants. Yeah. And, and, and their business is doing very well. You know, so if you say, wow, this, this, this aligns, Michael said a lot of things, by the way, of what he just said there. Something that aligns with his values and is doing well in business seems like a good investment. Who else has a company they would invest in? What's another company you guys would invest in? I'm going to ask you true. What's the company you guys would invest in? Tesla. Tesla. It's a great, it's a great choice. Why Tesla? Uh, their, their stocks are always pretty good. And, and innovative as hell. I had to, it's so weird you mentioned Tesla. I kept on having this repeating dream last night that, that Elon Musk wanted to come up and have lunch with us at St. Francis. I don't know why I was having that dream. I could never get this, get the schedule to work. What about you guys? What's the stock you're interested in? AMC, oh yeah, we're going to see what happens with the next group of Redditors here. What about you, you folks? What's the stock you're interested in? Or a company? Like, what, what's a company if somebody gave you money you would invest in? Car companies. Ford, by the way, is doing okay because of the new Bronco. What's, what's a company you guys would invest in? I would just say Tesla. Uh, yeah, very aggressive company. What do we have back here? What's a company you guys would invest in? So, Bullock, yeah, because Bullock's going to come back. They're one of the biggest uh, manufacturers in the world. We already have Chick-fil-A back here. So you can pick a company for any reason. You can pick it based on your personal values. You can pick it based on something you're passionate about. You can pick it based on market performance. But what I'm going to ask you to do is back up that you've researched the company. 
So you're going to have to get citations to give you a backup for what you learned about the company, and at least a recent news article or two about that company. You're also going to track your stock's performance for the entire month. Here's the deal. That's not hard to do. You, you don't have a hard time tracking your stocks. You guys, uh, you can go back in time on this stuff anytime. It's very easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that on Fred. When you actually put your document together, what you're going to show me is how your stock performed for the entire month, and you're also going to show me what your rate of return is. Guys, if you will reference the report that I gave each group, take it out, and I, you may even need to look over each other's shoulders because I gave you one copy. What I'm about to do is to show you guys, please put your phones away. I'm showing you how to get an A on this, this assignment that's 10% of your grade. We look at the cover of the document. We have the team name. We have who is in the team. I blocked those names out because I took those names off to be confidential. You got a table of contents here. When we get into our investment selection and strategies, very first part of the document, you're going to tell me, did you go aggressive or did you go conservative or did you do a mix of both? How many people in here, and groups can even have different opinions on this, if you got $100,000, how many people would go crazy and go for broke with risky investments? Yeah, why not? You, you, the money landed in your lap. How many of you would go conservative because you don't want to lose any money? How many of you would split the difference? Yeah, there's merits to every strategy. So what you're going to be doing is telling me what strategy your group picked and why. That's your investment uh, uh, selection and strategies. Then you're going to give me a summary of every one of the companies you pick, and you're going to cite them in text where you got the corporate information. When we get the corporate summaries and news, that's telling me what's going on with your companies. For example, did, did Elon Musk and Tesla do something in the last couple of weeks that really wowed a lot of people? What did they do? So they're making moves in cryptocurrency for sure. And if we go back to the, the, the rocket launches of the past year, they've shown that we can privatize space exploration. They're also putting up satellite internet that's going to, get this guys, they're building a group of satellites that's going to go around the earth to sell internet service to people in rural areas, and they're going to use that money to finance a mission to Mars. So we're privatizing the space program. Pretty amazing stuff. So what you're doing in that whole section, in the entire section of corporate summaries and news, you're telling me what's going on with, with all of these companies. When we get over to page six, we see you've got a historical price index. You're saying for the whole month, how did your stock do? That looks like it took a lot of time to put together. In reality, guys, what you're going to be able to do is to get this information all off the web. I'm going to show you on Friday how to generate these reports. You're going to do one for each stock that you're following. You have to follow no more than four stocks and no fewer than three. So three to four stock investments. When we get over to your monthly charts, for example, this, these graph out your performance for the month. I'm going to show you how to generate those right from the web. So you're going to be copying and pasting them. Now here's where, where blank gets real. If we get to page 12, these are your charts that show your rate of return. Now the rate of return means how well did your stocks do? Did they make money or lose money? I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to be doing it in class the next couple of days how to calculate a basic rate of return. Finally, on page eight, or I'm sorry, 13, observations and summary. What I'm asking you to do is tell me how well did your group do? Did you guys perform well? Did people fall off? How did you guys work together? And finally, you have a bibliography at the end. Guys, if you had to go through this document, here's where people lose points. The number one way people get a bad grade or have failed this assignment is plagiarism. If you put something in the document, if it's copy and paste, and you're using the verbiage verbatim, what do you have to do? You gotta cite it and you gotta put quotes around it. When should you use quotations? Anybody know? When the verbiage carries particular weight. You don't need to cite statistics. You don't need to, no, you need to cite statistics. Flat out paragraph long quotes from Forbes won't fly. If it's numerical, put it in your own words. Tell me why you like Tesla. Tell me why you like Chick-fil-A. Tell me how they're doing in the market. If there's a direct quote that carries weight, that's when you quote it. I'll give you examples. We're talking about four score and, and, and 20 years ago, we're quoting Abraham Lincoln. That's worth quoting. 
If you're saying, I have a dream, it's Martin Luther King, that's worth quoting. If it's that the market's moved 25% in the last two months, paraphrase. Always cite your work. I'll tell you the easiest ways I can spot plagiarism. I literally had somebody whose writing changed fonts to a different color and went into italics for four pages, and the complete writing style changed, and they submitted it as if it were their own work. That was really insulting, to say the least, but it's an easy way to get a bad grade on the assignment. Here's the other way people get bad grades on the assignment. You cannot get an A on this assignment if your math is not correct. Double check your math. I'll, I'll forgive decimal point errors, but you got to check it. And the other thing, too, guys, if you're questioning anything in your paper, so long as you get it in before the deadline, if you want me to take a look at your work and go through it with you, I will. You can bring me as a group your draft, and I'll go through it with you, and I'll tell you what to fix. But you can't do it the night the assignment is due. That does not, not give me enough time. If you give me a day or two notice before the deadline, which is in April, I think it's April 12th, I think, that we have on this, I will go through your paper with you, and if you have questions, I'll tell you what to fix. If you have questions about citations, is this plagiarism or not, come see me. I'll help you. I'm not out to punish anybody if we can avoid it. Does that all make sense, guys? So on Friday, I'm going to show you how to use what we call a stock aggregator. And what that is is a way to automatically monitor your stocks. Most of the charts in here... You can copy and paste. By the way, does anybody know how to capture a, a snapshot of their, their desktop on their computer? It's shift print screen on PCs. I'm not sure what it is on Macs, but it's going to change your life because you're going to be using that for all this stuff, and it's going to make it so easy. What questions do you have? You could totally lose your ass in the markets, guys, and still get an A on this paper if you show me your rate of return that was correct, and then you tell me why you did what you did. With me, guys? All right, go on once, go on twice. All right, we're going to continue. You guys can stay in your groups for a minute, or you can go back to your seats. You can sit wherever you want. But because we're talking about securities, we have a little company named Nike that's been in the news for some bad things lately. And I'm going to start off because this really deals with ethics and insider trading. So sit back. It was basically in the sneaker resale, doing high end sneaker sales and essentially was getting crowdfunding to be able to buy large lots of sneakers. And no, nothing wrong with that. You can legally do that. For this last round of purchases, though, he had to use his mom's credit card and his mom's Nike credit card, and his mom is a high executive for Nike, to buy Nike sneakers to resell them to the general public. Is there a problem here? Yes? Um, in this specific video, it did not say that you purchased any Nikes at all. Well, and, and he's, you know, this, this one side of it, he's done both. So he has he has bought Yeezys, he has bought Nikes. He did so, though, with his mom's, because his mom is an executive for Nike, his mom's corporate Nike card. Yeah. Yeah, so, so tell me more. So let's, let's stick with the Yeezys for a minute. I, I agree that on paper that sounds really good. Uh, is there is there some potential that he has insider information because of who his mom is? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say possibly because he had to use a card, so he knew the information that they had, so he somehow got information from his mom, whether she told him or that she just found it out somehow. Exactly right. So we're talking about a situation where somebody, it is conceivable, had insider information about what shoes were going to drop, what was coming next, what we're going to be the, the possible outcomes here. And that's bad enough, but the fact that you're actually using your mom's Nike credit card, your actual mom's credit card for the company she works for, to buy these shoes. This process, did it drive up potentially, does this process potentially drive up the, the cost for consumers? Sure. Yeah, because you're at a point now where if, if you want a new release pair of whatevers, if you don't get them day of sale, if you don't get them direct from Nike, you're going to pay some serious bank to get them later on. This gets almost into what we refer to as antitrust 
Has anybody ever heard of the phrase antitrust before? Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the phrase. Does anybody know what it means? Anybody know what antitrust means? Here's, here's sort of an approximation. Of it. Let's say Joe and I both work for a company, and we know we're going public next month. What kind of company is that? Pizza. We, do, we have the next big game of pizza. And we are going public with it. So what we're doing, Stefan over here is a good buddy of mine, and I'm like, hey, this IPO is going to be huge. It's, it's going to be big. So he gets ready, and he tells six more of his friends, yeah, this IPO, this initial public offering, is going to be huge. And all of a sudden, this little pizza company that nobody knew about comes out of nowhere and ends up being huge, and people had inside information based on people working inside the company, and that's where we get into antitrust and insider trading. So that, that brings down a lot of companies, and I think we're going to see more things coming out of companies like Nike having to have better codes of ethics and what we refer to as transparency to report to people what exactly they're doing in terms of allowing people to have access to this kind of information outside their households. Any other comments, guys? All right, well, we're going to jump in, guys. We're going to be talking about securities, and I would write this down. When I say securities, I mean stocks and bonds. I would write this down. When I say securities, I mean stocks and bonds. I'm going to say it one more time. When I say securities, I mean stocks and bonds. And we invest in securities because we grow our wealth this way. In the United States, this is the number one way that people grow wealth through things like retirement. Stocks and bonds. It's the way you're able to participate in the market. What we're going to be talking about in Chapter 16, we're going a little out of order, is how companies move money and how they generate money and one of the biggest ways that companies in the United States generate money is by issuing stocks and bonds. We call them securities. We're also going to be talking about how the, the, what the differences are between debt and equity. If you have debt, it means you owe somebody money as opposed to equity. Let me give you an example. Let's say, oh, let's see, who are, we going to, who are we going to put on the seat for this one today? Who are we going to put? Let's say Michael and I are, uh, are doing business together and I owe him money. I have the option of paying him back because I owe him a loan, or I can say, hey, Michael, instead of paying that money that I owe you, how about I give you a share of equity? You can own part of my company. Which are you going to take? It's my awesome pizza company. I got a joke. It's going to be big. All right, so he's saying it's big. Big and big. It's going to be big. What kind of pizza do you like? All right, we're going to make all kinds of Hawaiian pizza, thick or thin crust. Oh, we got super thin crust. You're going to love it. So he's taking some equity. And so, in other words, he can choose to own part of my company. Somebody else may want the money back. We're also going to talk about how issuing stocks and bonds help companies grow and how they, they are able to, to get money to fund where they want to go. We're also going to talk about how people within these companies manage this stuff. Guys, this is a, a really important slide. It's a lot of information on a single slide. What it means is we've got a way to cash moves through companies. Guys, if you're starting a company, you might have savings that you put into your own company. If you're Jeff Bezos and you come from a rich family, you can borrow the money from your family to start your company. Some people borrow money. Some people sell what we refer to as fixed assets. That means that we had things we could sell and get money to start our company or to keep it running. Cash sales means we're doing business and we're making money. And collection of accounts receivable means people owe us money. Those are all the ways other than securities, the, the money comes into a company. If you're not issuing stock or bonds, these are the ways that you get money into your company. That money goes out of the company when we're buying what we refer to as fixed assets. We've got to buy cars. We've got to build buildings. Uh, payment of dividends. If we are a publicly owned company or if we have shareholders, we've got to pay people. Purchase of inventory. It costs money to, do, to make money, so we've got to buy supplies. And payment of expenses. We've got to keep the lights on. We've got to keep the buildings warm. And what's the number one source of expenses for companies? Paying human beings. We are expensive and we're complicated. We break and we do dumb things all the time. That's how cash moves through a business, guys. The root of all this stuff is what we refer to as financial management. And that means if you are in a position where you're making decisions for the company, you've got to decide where the money goes. You've got to decide how many of you, by the way, have ever had a job already. Has anybody ever been through this process? Have you ever asked for a raise? 
Whoa, why do bosses hate giving raises? Why do they hate giving raises? I think all you guys probably deserve a raise. Why do bosses hate giving raises? They only have so much money to work with and they don't have to take it from somewhere else. That's exactly right. So the money's got to come from somewhere else. And so that's financial management. But the flip side is we've got to think about this stuff. Laxton's a great employee. And he, he how, how long has it been since you had a raise, man? Probably 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. 10 years. And he's saying, man, I'm tired of this place. And he's a great employee. So if I don't want to lose him, I better give him a raise. So that's a strategic move to keep one of my good people in my company. But if I don't, if I give him a raise, I got to take the money from somewhere else. So that's financial management. And so that, that includes managing your strategy, uh, how you want to grow, and even just keeping the lights on and paying people. Payroll is a big deal, guys. When we do financial planning, what we're trying to predict is how much money are we pulling in versus how much money we're paying out. If we give somebody a raise, that's bigger expense. We also have to reinvest in a company, too, guys. How many of you have ever been to a place? I, I, I want to phrase this question very carefully. How many of you have ever been to some place that used to be cool, but now it sucks because they let it get run down? You ever been in there? Like it was a favorite restaurant when you were a kid. It was a favorite amusement park you used to go to. Something where people just let it get run down. You're shaking your head yes. Can you give me an example? Uh, it was like an Italian-style restaurant that we used to go to a lot when we were uh, younger. It was kind of like, like you said, like more and more just kind of run down. People quit caring, right? Yeah. And so it's the idea being, you, if you don't reinvest, you, you might kill the goose that laid the golden egg anyway. So you got to reinvest in your companies. Guys, if you want to know why a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich costs so much more than a chicken sandwich at McDonald's, it's because which place is nicer when you walk in? Where are people happier to see you? Where are they paid better? At Chick-fil-A. And that is investing in people. Here's a, here's a little trivia question for you guys, talking about reinvesting. How much out of every dollar in revenue that comes into Sheets, you know, one of the biggest corporations in Pennsylvania, for every dollar they pull in in revenue, how much of that dollar is profit? One cent. One cent. How did you know that? <laughs> like literally every day. You know Kevin Hart? Oh yeah. 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 He's like every week. He he was he man he always had some of the best observations in class too. By the way, one cent. You may say to yourself, man, why would a company even stay operating? That's how much they reinvest in their company, and that's why they're going gangbusters because they're going for volume. If you're financing, though, you got to raise your cash somehow. And if you're getting beyond what you can finance with your own profits, you got to somehow raise cash. And you can do that with debt or equity. In terms of short-term expenses, we're talking operating expenses. You, you're talking about current assets. And what current assets are? How many of you have already had an accounting class? So you know what a current asset is. That means something you can quickly turn into cash. If I'm at the bookstore, the sweatshirts up there are current assets. If I'm a Torian, it's really current assets, whatever food is out, because it's going bad quickly, so we can turn it into cash. And we get into the idea of cash management. For your first aspect is you got to make sure you're paying the bills. Accounts receivable means we sold things to people, and we haven't been paid for them yet. So we've got to get those folks to pay up. And finally, we've got to maintain an inventory. It's frustrating to a customer if they go someplace and what they want to buy is not in stock, well, the reason companies try not to keep too much inventory lying around because it gathers dust and it's not making them any money. If you want to know why products go on sale, it's because they've been sitting around not being sold enough where people are saying, where companies are saying, we'll even sell it at a loss rather than lose everything for having this Occupy space. Let me give you an example. Uh, actually, I'll give you an example after we go through long-term expenses. Uh, long term means that you are getting into bigger investments, things that are going to take you longer than a year to pay off. So what we're talking about here are buildings, vehicles, all these sorts of things that are long term investments. How many of you have ever used either Expedia or Priceline? Or know somebody who has? Do you know what their services are? It basically comes down to this. Expedia and Priceline look at things that are sitting around not being sold. If you need a hotel room, for example, if you're traveling and you need a hotel room, you can use Expedia or you can use Priceline to bid on a room. I'll give you a great example. One time I was traveling, I was late at night and I couldn't drive anymore and I was in the Pittsburgh region. 
So I got on Expedia and I booked a room at the Hilton by the airport for 45 bucks. That room normally goes for 250 a night. Why did I get it for 45 bucks? Because it was already 10 o'clock at night and otherwise they were getting no money for that room that was going to sit empty. So that's the way that companies operate because we don't want inventory that's not being sold. And then we get into short-term financing, but here's, here's my deal for you today. Oh, I've got a deal for you today. Guys, the deal for you today is because we just spent a lot of time going through the stock game. And first of all, by a show of hands, did all the groups email me your names and your team members? Just raise your hands if you did. Awesome. All right. If one of you has a good comment or observation or question, we're going to cap off class for the day. So who among you? Has a question or a comment you would like to ask, or stay, or a song you like to sing? Yes. What's the most money one of these groups has made? Which, which groups? My, uh, the um, stock market group. Which? Like, oh, oh, okay. Like, we have one group. I can't quote you the exact amount, but we had a group get something insane, like a twenty-five percent rate of return, which is unbelievable. Like that's that, that's that's a once in a lifetime thing when that happens. So, yeah, we've had groups lose absolutely everything too. So twenty-five percent. All right, guys, I'll see you Friday.